Hi, I'm Chris Allen of Capdragon. Today's video is an update on the development of Knight of the Three Ring Drones, showing what we've added and changed over the last few months. I'm going to show you the different game modes you'll be playing during the campaign, as well as give you an insight into the different locations that you'll be defending. We are still developing certain areas of the game, so some things may appear different in the final version, however, most of the game's mechanics are working as intended. Let's take a look. Okay, so before I show you new game modes, I'm going to take you through some of the changes we've made to the game uh, since we last uh, had it out there. Um, probably the best way to do that is to show you the the museum level and the defence mode again. So let's just pop into that. Okay, here we go. So if you've uh, played the demo on our website or you've seen us play the game before, uh, you might notice a few changes immediately, but we'll just go through a few things. So we've started adding kind of decorations to the uh, to the levels, to the areas, um, just to make them look a bit more kind of used and less like a kind of sealed off area. Uh, so we've got these kind of uh, little decorative items around, so in, in the museum levels it's going to be kind of these parts, sarcophaguses, maybe a few other things as well. Um, we've also added kind of doors where the spawn points are, just to kind of make them show up, stand out a little bit more from the normal walls. Uh, we've also added kind of uh, different lighting to the level as well. So the treasures have their own light source which kind of only affects them, doesn't affect anything around them. It kind of just makes them kind of pop out and stand out more, especially when the, when the level gets dark. Uh, we've changed the lighting around the, the spawn points as well, uh, just to make that look a little, little better than it, than it was. And we've given knights a volumetric light rather than a standard light source, just to kind of act more like a torch beam. Uh, it kind of shows a little bit about uh, what night's range is, what its detection angle is as well and it just looks nice when it's kind of uh, moving around and it, it's hitting things or it's getting cut off by different objects as well. There's a few more things to, uh, to talk about but I'll just start the game off and show you. So one of the things we had a lot of feedback about was the, the game's speed as you were playing it. Um, a lot of people felt it was uh, playing a bit too slowly. So what we've done is we've increased uh, the movement speed of night and all the other drones. It just makes each level feel less like a slog, like a, ch like a chore. And they all, uh, they all kind of feel more like a boost, you know, like a, a quick burst of, 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 just like a quick burst of play now. So it's kind of a bit more fun. It's kind of a bit more fun. Kind of the challenge feels a bit more constant as well. see that volumetric light there just shining around the corner it just kind of shows you what you can see around the walls as well which is really helps when you're targeting. So we are still working a bit on the navigation of the enemy drones. Um, when in, in the kind of older versions we had these cases where they were kind of causing bottlenecks, um, collisions, uh, traffic jams you know and some were kind of steamrolling over each other and it kind of just didn't work very well. So we're kind of working on, on making that better um, make it a bit more fluid, make them a bit more smarter, and it's, we, we seem to get in there, but there's still a few things we need to correct. Uh, to kind of help with that, we've kind of made the, the areas, or the levels, a bit more spacious as well, so we've kind of reduced the number of cases where there's kind of one tile between each wall. It kind of just gives the, the drones somewhere else to move when there's something else in the way. So each, each of the different areas in the game will have their own kind of personality if you like. So the museum, for example, has uh, these kind of flowing layouts, as, kind, of, kind of as if you're being guided from one place to the next. Um, each of the different levels in, in the museum will feel like it has its own kind of uh, usage. So you have like viewing galleries, you have storage rooms, that kind of thing. So no, we've finished the level now. So when you finish the level in, in the game, you'll get a performance score. Um, in defence mode, that will be based on the number of treasures you have left in the game, uh, in the stage when you finish. Uh, so if you start losing treasures, your performance goes down. You'll also get a, a cash fee as well for completing levels. So you'll get a base fee for each mission, uh, plus a, a bonus based on the number of enemies you defeat in the level. Uh, so at the minute, the, the the bonus is I think it's 50 coins per, per enemy you defeat, so it's quite the same time for beating 50. Okay, so that's that's gone through some of the changes we've made to the game so far. Okay, so now I'm going to show you one of the new areas in the game, which is the, the bank area. 
and I'm going to show you one of the new game modes as well. So let's jump into this, and this is going to be a mode called Swarm Mode. So in Swarm Mode, the idea is to get the highest score possible. Um, what you, what will happen is that enemies are going to spawn in from these uh, red areas here, on and this level on the right hand side, and they're going to try and make it to the, the blue areas over here. Um, so every time you shoot an enemy drone, you get a point for that. But every time one of the enemy drones makes it to one of the uh, the blue points, then you will lose a point. So this is kind of like um, you're basically trying to defend a, a building from a kind of a, a rush of, of enemies uh, who, are, who are trying to break in and steal the treasure. There is no treasure to defend in this particular mode. Uh, it's just about kind of shooting enemies down. Uh, okay, so before I start the level, I'm just going to spend the, spend the, uh, the bank here setting a little bit as well. So the bank will feel perhaps a little more kind of open and airy than the, the museum area, uh, but there will also be kind of more secure, a more, a more secure feel as well. So you can probably see like the uh, the metal bars here, uh, security cameras on the pillars here, the kind of security checkpoints here. Um, it's it, it's just kind of made to feel like a, a high secure building so there's like the, the heavy bolt doors as well so this kind of setting as, as a whole is, is kind of like a checkpoint area between kind of two vaults or kind of between the kind of entryway from the from the um, from the bank into a, a vault area uh, you'll see in the bank as well kind of like a reception area uh, kind of uh, inside vaults uh, kind of more of these kind of security areas as well so again there's kind of a, a variety of different levels to, to play Okay, so let's uh, let's start swarm mode and see what happens. This will be a kind of good way to show you what the different uh, two of the different drones in the level do. So what I've, what we've got here, I'm looking at now, are the uh, are the fly drones. Uh, these guys here, um, and this is a little spider at the bottom here as well. So the flies are a little more mobile than the spiders. They move a little quicker. Um, they also hover, so they can hover over kind of small obstacles like the like the desks here. Um, what you'll see as well is that they go completely invisible uh, during the darker portion of the level, whereas the spider has those kind of glowing antennas uh, which kind of show you where they are. The flies though take less time to shoot down um, than, than the fly does, they're, they're not durable at all, so you can, you can very quickly shoot them down. Okay, so we've got a couple down here to kind of disappear in the way. What you'll notice as well as, as spawn mode carries on is that more and more drones will come in faster and faster. So um, the, the pace will change kind of the longer the mode lasts. It's, it's about kind of managing um, the best the, the best position to, uh, to to be in to kind of shoot down as many as possible. So you're kind of having to take control of different areas of the level. You'll never you'll never have control over the entire level um, at one time because there's different channels for the enemies to get through. But it's just a case of kind of deciding what the best place to be in at one time is. Of course, as you as you um, buy more upgrades for for knights, uh, you'll get kind of uh, more mobile, uh, faster speeds. You'll get uh, wider detection areas. Uh, you'll get a, a longer range as well. You can even, you can even upgrade to get um, shorter kind of shot times as well. Uh, so this is one of those modes that will become easier the more time you kind of put into playing the game and um, upgrading night. So you can see down here there's a, there's a couple of kind of flies that are practically invisible at the moment. You can perhaps just see a little shadow moving along, um, but you won't really see them pop until you get your beam on them. Whereas the, the spiders are just so easy to pick up even in the night. I just love the effect when the when the, uh, the volumetric beam shines through the bars as well. You can, it just blocks out. It, you can just see the shadow of them. It's just amazing. Okay, got ten seconds left. Uh, gonna get the final score soon. Let's see if we can get keep it above ten before we go. Short. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, as as. Um, as normal, you'll get a performance score and a, a mission fee as well. Uh, so your performance is based on the number of uh, enemies you shoot down, um, and your mission fee is, is kind of just like a flat fee again for the level and how many how many enemies you shoot down as well. Okay, so 
so the last of the areas I'm going to show you today and the last of the game modes um, is going to be the office stage and I'm going to show you the survival mode so in survival mode you have to take on um, a series of enemy drones that are coming in to attack night um, so these these are called the enemy and they are built specifically to target night and attack him um, in survival mode you have a, a set amount of energy so in this case three and every time you attack you lose one of those bars of energy if you lose all of the energy uh, uh, then then night gets destroyed and you lose that level um, survival starts with two spawn points open uh, but eventually more of those will open and you'll also get more uh, enemy drones coming in uh, at one time as well so you can easily get overwhelmed towards the later end of the game uh, so let's just start this and we'll show you so we've got enemy spawning in at the bottom right here uh, they move quite slowly so you can kind of keep a good distance bet uh, between you and them uh, they also have quite a wide turning circle so you can easily mount maneuver them but if you're not keeping an eye on your surroundings they will easily pin you down uh, so you need to kind of deal with them quite quickly uh, if they do attack you um, they'll stun you for about five seconds um, they do appear in other game modes as well uh, but not as not as often um, in, in those cases they're more of a distraction than, a, uh, than an obstacle so if, if they do appear in other game modes you don't have to worry about kind of um, any any kind of health or energy or anything like that uh, it's just in survival that it, that it happens uh, but of course if they attack you in, in uh, let's say defense mode and uh, you've got enemies getting away with treasure it can easily cause you to lose that level so you need to deal with them quickly so enemy has to be quite close to you to attack you but um, they can be a little distance away so um, try not to let them get too close otherwise they, they, will, they will get you sometimes unexpectedly as well so I was just about kind of keeping an eye on your surroundings um, just keep moving, just uh, don't stay in one place and try not to get, get anything kind of behind you um, otherwise you, you will find that you'll be attacked quite easily uh, so just want to talk about the office space a little bit as well so um, the office will be a little more kind of closed in than the other areas you've seen so far uh, but we want to make it look like it's uh, had a lot of use so you'll probably see a lot more decoration around so kind of papers left around uh, computers laptops tablets that kind of thing uh, this particular room is a kind of uh, graphics design area or kind of design area um, other areas will be kind of multi-purpose or there'll be like meeting rooms uh, kind of rest areas or kind of uh, big rooms with lots of cubicles in we kind of want the office uh, area to look like a, a kind of series of, of well, kind of, a kind of each kind of room will be a kind of different floor of, of, a, of a tall office building, that kind of thing. Okay, so you can see we've got quite a few enemies coming in right now. Uh, probably a good time to show you what happens if one does hit you. So let's see if this guy hits me. Uh, so he hits me, but when that happens, all of the other enemies in the room get destroyed at the same time. So you'll get stunned for about five seconds but um, no more will spawn in and the other ones will be cleared. It just gives you a few seconds to kind of um, gather yourself back up again, kind of reposition yourself and figure out uh, kind of where your next target's gonna come from. It does cost you a life, but it can kind of um, calm you down a little bit as well. So I'm about to get pinned at the back here. I don't wanna be, let's, let's move away. Yeah, so enemy enemy is quite resilient as well. You need to focus on them quite for quite a while before you can hit them. Uh, you can make use of your added maneuverability though, which which really helps. Okay, so we're about to complete the level now. There we go. So um, your performance at the end of the level will be based on the amount of health you've got left. So I lost a life, so I lost a performance score. Uh, but you'll still get a mission fee and a bonus um, as you would any other level. Okay, so there are going to be other areas in the final game, um, at least two of us that we, that we have planned. Um, you'll probably see those in the future, we might leave that till kind of closer to release. Um, but 
you know, there are there is more stuff coming. There is also a, a series of tutorials. You'll get tutorials on how to how to control knights, um, what different enemies in the game do, and also you'll, you'll have a tutorial on each of the different game modes as well. Uh, those are completely free to play. You don't, they don't cost you any energy. You can play them as long often as you want, just to practice and practice and practice. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope it's been interesting, and I can't wait for you to have the final game to play with. Before I go, I have one more thing to say. We've been working on Night of the Thieving Drones for nearly a year now. In all that time, we've had a lot of help and support from a lot of amazing people who have been kind to us and patient with us while we've been getting our game ready. We are so very grateful to everyone who has been with us on this journey, and we hope you'll carry on supporting us in the future. So today, I am happy to announce that the Android version of Night of the Thieving Drones will be releasing on the 10th of July. This version of the game will come with 50 levels of varying difficulty and we're looking at adding more areas, challenges and game modes in future updates. Please keep an eye on our social media channels for more news and updates. For now, thank you for watching, stay safe and I hope we'll see you again soon.